Who's there? The wow <laughs> man. Well, come on in and do your thing. It's school time, and we're in the classroom with three great pupils. That's right, three great young fellas, about six or seven years of age, an Italian boy, a colored boy, and a little Jewish boy. And the teacher said to all three pupils, pupils, we are going to have a sentence B. I said, a sentence B? I never heard of nothing like that. A spelling B? Yes, but a sentence B. And the teacher said to all them little six and seven years old, I want you to get together and give me a sentence and use the word definitely. In case you cannot use the word definitely, you have permission to question your teacher. The first one jumped up and was named Solomon, the little Jewish boy. He said, teacher, I don't have to question you, teacher, because I got my sentence together. The teacher said, let me hear it, Solomon, but remember, it must include the word definitely. Solomon jumped up and said, it is raining outside, and the ground is definitely wet. The teacher said, that's sure enough, beautiful Solomon. Next pupil, please. Luigi jumped up. The little Italian boy said, teacher, got my sentence together. The teacher said, remember, Luigi, it must include the word definitely. And if it don't, you can question me. And Luigi said, I have to question you, teacher. I got my sentence together. The teacher said, let me hear it, Luigi. The little Italian boy jumped up and said, I have eaten two bowls of spaghetti. And my tummy. It's definitely full. The teacher said, that show is beautiful. That's beautiful. And all of a sudden, it's time for the brother. He didn't say nothing, so she called him by his first name. Rufus! Oh, teacher, I wasn't asleep. I wasn't asleep, teacher. I, I, I just wanted to, to question you before I give out with my sentence. The teacher said, you have permission to question me, Rufus, but your question must help you give out with a sentence and include the word definitely. He said, if I can question you, teacher, I got my sentence together. The teacher said, what is your question, Rufus? Rufus said, teacher... Is a fart lumpy? The teacher said, repeat your question, Rufus. Rufus said, I said, is a fart lumpy? The teacher said, no, it is not. Rufus said, well, I have definitely shitted in my pants. <laughs> Problems, problems, everybody's got problems. Walking into the club, walking into the club, and all of a sudden I notice all the waitresses out there in front of the club with no clothes on, naked, naked, naked. I walked up to one of the waitresses, I says, girls, why are you out here naked like this? And they said, we are on a strike. We are on a strike, and we're not going to put no clothes on, no clothes on until we get a raise. And I looked at all them naked chicks, I said, <laughs> <laughs> and I took off all my clothes and got naked to it, laid right down there beside him. And one of the waitresses looked at me and said, Wow, man, what are you doing down here with your clothes off? I said, Honey, I'm on a strike too, and I'm going to whack as soon as I get me a raise. <laughs> got a little upset the other day reading the newspaper looking at the pictures of the astronauts and never did i see a dark face in that program never have i seen a black man heading for the moon so i sent the president a telegram and i stated in my telegram dear president as an american citizen sincerely and dedicated to my country knowing that you have been sending astronauts to the moon and each and every time they're all Caucasian, each and every time they're white men. Not only did you send one, you sent two, and then you sent three, and they were all white men. Dear President, as an American citizen in the United States of America, I would like to know sincerely, will there be a Negro astronaut in your next space program? Two days later, got a telegram. Got a telegram from the President. But I still don't understand it because all the telegram said in reply here's a definite answer to your question about a Negro astronaut I would like to let you know sincerely wild man Steve there will be a coon on the moon by June <laughs> I'm talking about tell you the Negro and the Jew. That's right. When I talk about him, I don't know. It just gives me a good, good feeling. A lot of times people say, well, you only talk about the Italian, the Jewish, and the, and, the, and, the, and the Negro man. How come? What about the kids? Well, they get along good together. They really do, and I can prove it. Three of them down south were swimming. And all of a sudden, they were out, you know, having a good, good time. And they were just swimming, having a ball. And all of a sudden, they saw this man out on the boat. And the man boat turned over. And the man hollered, help! 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 The Italian, the Negro, and the Jewish boy, like good boy scouts, they swam to the man, rescued him, brought him back to land, and was giving him artificial respiration, and brought him back to life again. And the man said, fellas, 
fellas. You don't know what you did. You just saved my life. And I'm the richest man in this state. And not only the richest man in this state, I'm the governor of this state. And you can name any wish and you can have it. I know that you're too young to have a lot of money, but I'll give the money to your father. Anything that you want. I'm the richest man in this state, the governor of this state. The, the Italian fellas say, well, if I can have anything that I want for my daddy, I'd like you to give my daddy a racetrack. The governor said, a racetrack? What do you want with a racetrack? He said, so that, you know, us Italians, so that we can have our own, own betting system and we can just go out to the track and win a whole lot of money. The governor said, well, you got it. You got yourself a racetrack. Say it to the Jewish fellow, what do you want, little boy? Little Jewish boy, what do you want? He said, sir, I'd like to have a, a real bank for my daddy, our own bank. He said, what do you want with a bank? He said, well, sir... If we got a bank where well, we can have mortgages, we can buy real estate, we can invest in all sort of all sort of investments and just make a lot of money with our own bank. The rich man said, well, son, you got it, you got it, you got it. And then he said to the soul brother, he said, what do you want? You name it and you shall have it. The soul brother said, I'd like to, I'd like to have a hospital for my daddy. The governor looked at him and said, a hospital? What do you want with a hospital? He said, I want to... Be ready to have that transplant when time comes around. The, the rich man looked at him and said, Oh, son, I feel sorry for you. What kind of transplant is necessary for you? He says, It's not necessary now. But when I get home and my daddy find out that I've saved the governor of Mississippi's life, he gonna wear my ass out. <laughs> We got jams in our body of the same denomination. That's right. I got sick and went to the doctor with a bad cold. The doctor said, wow, man, you got it. I said, doctor, what have I got? He said, I don't want to tell you, but you got what you got. But you sure got it. You got it. And we're going to shoot you with this penicillin. It'll kill all the jams in your body. When he said that, three jams in my body heard the doctor. The Italian jam, the Jewish jam, and the color jam said, uh-huh. Then when that doctor said he going to shoot wild men and kill us all, the Italian jam said, oh, let's hear what else the doctor got to say. Don't be so hasty. The doctor said, before I shoot you with this penicillin, wild man, how is your process of elimination? I said, I don't know what you're talking about, doctor. He said, how is your process of elimination. How often do you do, 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 do? I said, oh, doctor, every morning with or without a newspaper, jet magazine, I do, do. Every morning, 8.20. I don't need no gastroid, no x lax I've been do, doing for the last 20 years at 8.20. The doctor said, if you're that regular, we'll shoot you with this penicillin and it'll kill all the germs in your body. The three germs had another meeting. The Italian, the Jewish germ, and the color germ said, uh-huh. Heard what that doctor said. He gonna shoot wild man and kill us all. The Italian gem said, I don't care nothing about no goddamn penicillin. I'll stay here and hide behind his heart. The Jewish gem said, well, if you're gonna stay, I'll stay too and hide behind his liver. The color gem said, y'all can hide any place you want to hide. I'm taking that 820 out here in the morning. <laughs> So many different people come into a doctor's office, and a doctor's only human. Every once in a while, a patient will run in that kind of upset the doctor's sex life. And a good-looking young lady walked in, and she was so fine, so beautiful, stacked up so beautifully. The doctor didn't even bother to ask her what was wrong with her. He said, honey, just come on in here, get in on the examination table, take off all your clothes. And he looked at that fine, fine body. The doctor grabbed her by the tennis and started rubbing them, saying, uh-huh. <laughs> Uh-huh, do you know what I'm giving you now? She said, no, doctor. What are you giving me now? The doctor rubbed them tennis and said, honey, I am giving you artificial respiration. She said, oh, carry on, doctor. And the doctor looked at her ruby red lips and started kissing her, stuck his tongue down her throat and said to the patient, said to the beautiful young lady, do you know? Do you know what your doctor's giving you now? She said, no, doctor. He said, I'm giving you mouth-to-mouth -mouth respiration. And all of a sudden, the doctor reached out and rubbed that fine brown frame and rubbed around her. Good Lord, have mercy. And she was breathing heavy. The doctor said, do you know? Do you know what I'm giving you now? She said, no, doctor. He said, I'm giving and taking your pulse below the rectum. And she said, carry on, doctor. And the doctor knew that he was all in the mood. They both was hot and all excited. The doctor took out his ding -a -ling and got up on top of the patient and started stroking. And it was getting good to him. The doctor said, oh, honey. Oh, honey. Honey, do you know what I'm giving you now? She said, no, I don't know what you're giving me, but 
you giving yourself the clown? <laughs> you run into all kind of strange people. I walked into this nightclub. Just before I can get into the club, I got ready to open the door, and a fellow walks up to me saying, are you the wild man? I gave that big wild man a smile and said, yeah, I'm the wild man. What you want me to sign your autograph? Autograph? Autograph, and he reached in his pocket, grabbed out a big 45, and said, I'll autograph your ass, goddammit. I said, what, do you want to kill me for, mister? I don't even know you. He said, you know my daughter, and you was in town nine months ago, and you had sex with my daughter, and she's pregnant for you, and if you don't do something about it, you see this girl, I'll kill you, I'll kill you. I said, holy sir, I'll kill you if you don't do something about it. I said, holy mister, I'll do something about it if your daughter... Has a little girl, I'll give her five thousand dollars. If she has a little boy, I'll give her ten thousand dollars. He dropped the girl, looked me straight in the eye, and said, Well, if she have a miscarriage, will you give her another chance? <laughs> <laughs> Women are always talking about they're pregnant, and when they're pregnant, they don't want to even admit it. That's right, I took a sister to the doctor, and the doctor said, Uh-huh. We've examined you, and uh, we don't know if this is good news or bad news, but you're pregnant. She said, Doctor, how dare you talk to an unmarried woman like me like that? I'm not pregnant. The doctor said, now look, you are pregnant. I'm not pregnant. The doctor said, excuse me a minute. And he walked over and raised the window and looked out. She said, what are you looking at that window for? The doctor said, when that star come from the east this time, I don't want to miss it. She said, Doctor, I am not pregnant. I'm not pregnant. The doctor said, well, wait a minute. Let me just hit you with a few questions. Have you been around anybody having sex? She said, I, uh, well, well, I was around somebody. I have nothing to do, Doctor. Here's what happened. The doctor said, tell me what happened. Well, Doctor, we had a big family reunion. All our family came down from Georgia, North Carolina. And, and, and everybody didn't have no places to, 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 to sleep, so we just like a big family. So I slept in the bed with my sister and her husband. Oh, my God, Doc. You don't think none could have splashed off on me, do you? <laughs> if it did, <laughs> he sure was wailing. <laughs> Many people always ask me, said, wow, man, what other kind of wake have you ever did besides tell jokes and be a disc jockey? Well, I must go back to my labor vocation. That's right. I worked hard at one time right in your city. Right in your city. Harlan Cole. That's right. I used to drive a coal truck. And I had to quit the job. And I'll tell you why. It wasn't because the job didn't pay money. But we got a special delivery for Mrs. Brown. The boss man said, Wow, man. I want you to take a load of soft coal and a load of hard coal over to Mrs. Brown's house and drop it down the chute. I said, all right, boss man. I jumped into the truck, got the hard coal on the truck, the soft coal on the truck, drove over to Mrs. Brown's house and backed it up to her chute. No sooner got ready to drop the coal, she hollered out the window, hey, wild man, wild man. I said, what you want, Miss Brown? You can't drop that coal down that chute now. Don't you see that I got all my clothes up on the line? I said, but let me just drop it now, Miss Brown. I got other deliveries to make. She said, you can't drop it now, doggone it. I got my clothes up on the line. I got so mad with Miss Brown. I ran to the telephone and called my boss. I said, I quit this job right now. He said, why do you quit, wild man? I said, I'll tell you why I quit. I got the soft off, the hard on, and Miss Brown got her clothes up and won't let me put it in. <laughs> this fellow walking into the ladies' room. I said, where are you going? He turned around with his little queer self and said, wow, man. I said, yeah, I am going to the ladies' room. I said, look at you, a man just like me. You wearing pants just like me. What right do you think that you have to go into the ladies' room? He looked at me with a little smile on his sissy face and said, because I have my mother's features. I said, look at here, faggot, you might have your mother's features, but you got your father's fixtures, so you know where to go. <laughs> so many things happen into the men's room. And girls, you ought to go in that men's room sometime. <laughs> if you ever go in that men's room one time, you never believe that thing Abraham Lincoln said long time ago. All men are created equal. That's a goddamn lie in that men's room. I am telling you, I went in there, and I turned around and looked at a cat. I said, God damn. Damn. I said, brother, if I had all of that, I'd rule the world. He said, that ain't mine. That's the cat way in the back of the line. Ah! <laughs>
And I'm telling just like this. I mean, some of you listening say, my God, wild man must be a faggot. He going there and look at men. I am no faggot. And if you're a real man, when you stand up to pee pee, brother, you do kind of peep out the corner of your eye to see what the other guy got. I mean, you don't just turn around and stare at him and say, my God, look what you got there. And I looked at a cat on the left hand side of me. And I ain't never pee peed in my life with my left hand. I didn't use my hand as a guide. I used it as a shield. I couldn't help but ask him. I said, my God, man, how do you get one that big? And remember what he told me, fellas? He said, why, ha, 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 man, do you want a ding a big like that? I said, well, not so much for me, but it would nice to be nice to take it home to my old lady. He said, if you want one big like this, you get up in the morning, you stick it in beans. Nighttime, you stick it in beans. Evening time, you stick it in beans. Morning, noon, and night, you stick it in beans. I said, what kind of beans? He said, human beans. <laughs> and then this fella right over in the right-hand side, he come running in there with his little ding a talking about, wow, man, if I had two more inches, I'd be a king. I said, baby, if you was two inches shorter, you'd be a queen. <laughs> The men's room was so crowded and I was so embarrassed, I sat down and pee peed. <laughs> and when I sat down to pee, a fellow walked in and said, looked at me and said, uh huh, I thought you was a sissy. I said, what are you talking about, fool? He said, if you was a man, you'd stand up and let it flow. I said, look, fool, I am no sissy, and the only reason why I'm sitting down peeing is I had a little trouble with my back, and my doctor told me don't lift nothing heavy. <laughs> When I said pee-pee, <laughs> I saw the expression on that lady's face, and I'm only talking about through this album. <laughs> she said, my God, I heard that he was nasty, but I did not think he would stand up on this album and say pee-pee. Yes, I said it, God damn it, wherever you are, wild man say pee. Pee, piss, God damn it sitting up acting like you ain't never heard of nobody doing it. And I know some of you out there listening that take a shit sometimes. And if you show me one person that don't take a shit, I'll show you somebody that's full of shit. <laughs> 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 <laughs>